Good morning, Lisa. Hello, how are you? Good, thank you. Now we have up for our first session of the day, we have Lisa from Miss Jones PA. She's going to take us through her hottest venues for next year. So, hand over to you, Lisa. Thank you. And good morning, everyone. And um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lisa and I head up Miss Jones PA. Um, we're a community and online membership for assistants and event planners. Um, and essentially work as a facilitator to introduce you to venues and suppliers, along with kind of being a marketplace for you all, where we give our members um, special offers, discounts, perks, um, a lot of online training at the moment and lots of other things. So you can find out more on our website, um, which is MissJonesPA.com. Um, so today I'm talking to you um, about venues to kind of have on your radar for the year ahead. Obviously, a few announcements yesterday. We're not really sure what's going to happen yet. But what we do know at the moment is you can still dine out in groups of six. You can host business meetings or business dinners for up to 30 people and you can host screenings from up to 80 people um, and that's with masks on, obviously. Um, so that's what we know. Um, so I do, especially for the hospitality industry at the moment, it's so important that we do still try to help them um, and eat out where we can. They're all putting in a lot of money into keeping um, their measures safe um, and I just think it's so important to help them at the moment. So um, I'm going to start off, um, basically I've put together a list of places that haven't opened yet that are opening, a few places that um, I think you need to check out at the moment and places that have been around for a while that you need to get back on your radar and then at the end I'm just going to give a few restaurants that I've been to recently that you should also check out. So starting off with restaurants, next slide. Um, caviar Caspiar. So this is um, originally a French Parisian restaurant in Paris. Um, French food, but they opened in Paris in 1927. It's very popular in Paris. It is coming to London, to Mayfair, um, and they kind of focus on fish, um, so caviar, obviously, um, poached eggs of caviar, um, Norwegian salmon, um, and lots of delicious food. So that will be open very soon. And next slide. So Nooser um, is the steak restaurant behind the Instagrammer um, sensation Salt Bay, um, who was, he basically was putting the salt, if you haven't seen it on the steak. So he's opened up a couple of restaurants um, all over the world. And this one is coming to Knightsbridge very soon, not sure on a date yet, but the board is up to say that it is coming soon. Um, and this is great for if you're kind of doing client entertaining um, or want to give your team a bit of an experience, something just a bit different and theatrical. Next slide. <clears throat> so Mandy's is opening very soon. It's from the duo Corbin and King, if you don't know them. They have the Wolseley, which is one of my favourite breakfast venues, uh, the Delaunay um, and Brasserie Zadell. This venue is, as if you know Brasserie Zadell, it's as big as um, Brasserie Zadell. It seats 240 people um, and really bright lighting. Um, so great for kind of a coffee meeting, a lunch with a client, that type of thing. Um, and they also have built a massive terrace, which is obviously great during these times. Um, and the cuisine is British meat, seafood kind of uh, dining, but also very affordable. Next slide. So I'm very excited about this. This hasn't opened yet um, and it should be opening soon. Again, date unknown. Um, but this is China by Alan Yao. So if you haven't heard of Alan Yao, he's the founder of Hakkasan, Wagamama's, Duck and uh, Rice, Park Xinhua. Um, and this is his latest venture. Um, it's meant to kind of have a bit of a 
branded as kind of the Chinese River Cafe. If you're familiar with the River Cafe, it's this amazing restaurant on the river near Hammersmith. Um, and this is, uh, this is gonna be amazing, a great addition to Canary Wharf. Um, on the water, a massive outdoor terrace. Again, really good for these times. Um, and it will be Asian food. But it's just something a bit different to Canary Wharf. I feel like it's going to add great value to the area. So very excited um, to check that out. Next slide. Um, so again, this is opening soon again. Um, this is by a very Port uh, famous Portuguese chef, Leandro Carrera. Um, he opened um, Londrino restaurant, which is actually now closed, which was in London Bridge. Um, and he's also behind um, the Sea the Sea, which is in Chelsea, a very cute little seafood restaurant. Great if you're in Chelsea at the weekend and want to kind of, you know, you've done your shopping and you want to stop off and have a nice little drink and a nibble. So um, this is his latest venture. Um, it's very small, it's 26 seater, counter dining, high tables, um, and it's uh, Portuguese fine dining, basically, small plates. So that is going to be um, open in the old Bunny Gull restaurant in Soho, and that should be open very soon. But um, as you can see, the prawns there look very delicious, even at this hour of the morning. So can't wait for that to open. Next slide. So Noble Ross, they already have a restaurant. This is their second restaurant, which has just opened. I haven't actually been yet, but I will be going very soon. In Soho, um, it's basically seasonal British dining um, with an extensive wine list. So if you're very into your wine, this is the place for you. Um, they have a very kind of hard to find gems from some of the finest winemakers in the world. Um, so great for a little lunch meeting. Um, I've just heard that their wine list is amazing and you can have it by the glass or by bottles. Um, so, and their other restaurant is doing very well. So definitely um, excited to try this. Their signature dishes, uh, one of them is Eggs Casino, which is cabbage stuffed with game and sour cream. And then they also introduce um, a daily goulash every day. So definitely want to put on your radar. Next slide. So this is a Saka Nikkei restaurant. Um, these, it hasn't opened yet and the location is unknown, but what we do know is it's coming very soon. Um, they have a load of restaurants in South America and then they also, the photo here is from their restaurant in Miami. Um, they're very, very popular. It's kind of Japanese food meets Peruvian, which is my favorite type of food. So thinking ceviche, sushi, lots of small sharing platters. Um, so can't wait to see where and when this goes open, but I do know that it is coming very soon. Next slide. So Crazy Pizza, it's just opened in Marlebone. Um, I think, don't be fooled by the name. When I first heard about it, I thought that it was gonna be your kind of average pizza joint. It is not, it is gorgeous inside. The interiors are very glamorous, very upscale pizzeria. And um, it's owned by an ex-Formula One boss, Flavio Briatore. Um, and they do have one in Porto Servo and Monte Carlo. Um, basically, lots of Mediterranean small plate starters, and then the pizzas um, are amazing. What's different about here is they serve very thin based pizzas, and they also pride themselves on not using yeast in their pizzas, which means you don't need feeling kind of bloated and really full. Um, so great place again for lunch, Really nice addition to Marlebone. Um, and again, I love the interiors and it's just a bit of an experience. Next slide. So these two restaurants are kind of two of the most anticipated openings of the year. Park Row Restaurant, I am so excited for this. Um, it's basically five restaurants, three bars, 
all based on the DC comics, which is like Batman, Superwoman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Um, and it's basically the whole venue is themed. There's nothing really like it at the moment. Um, and it's definitely going to be a really good experience. Um, so here the photo, which you can kind of see here, is uh, the Penguin's Opulent Ice Bar Lounge. You've got the big ice uh, penguin in the middle. It just looks like it's going to be so much fun. Uh, they also have counter dining um, and it's Harley Quinn's inspired playful Asian restaurant. Um, they've also got a speakeasy in there. A speakeasy, if you're not sure familiar what a speakeasy is, is kind of a little hidden and um, you don't know that it's their bar um, with incredible cocktails and that's all Gotham City themed. Um, and then they've also got, which I think sounds really cool, a Monarch Theatre where you dine and watch multi uh, films um, and it's about 120 ahead and you get this amazing multi-sensory dining experience. Um, so that sounds really cool. And then the main restaurant um, will be headed up by James Bulmer, who pre previously ran Heston Blumenthal's uh, Fact Up group. So the people behind it, the experience, I'm dying for this to open and it should be open soon. Um, and I, it's in the Soho area. And then this other restaurant that we have that's just opened is Maison Francois. Um, it's on the corner of German Street and Duke Street classic French brasserie um, but what I love about this is they've got this little downstairs wine bar which is going to be perfect for events when they come back um, really just really cute really nice and just a great addition to the area I love the St James's area and I think this will fit in nicely next slide so I'm now going to move on to hotels and um, these are all hotels opening or about to open in the capital. Next slide. So very excited for Hotel Cost. Um, this is a very famous hotel in Paris. I love going when I'm there. Um, very dark interiors, really good for people watching. You'll always see somebody there. Really cool to just go to the bar and have a drink. Um, I usually go for a cocktail and they're very famous for their cheesecake, which is also Kim Kardashian's favourite uh, cheesecake um, and love it. I think it's a great addition to Chelsea area. There's not um, a lot of hotels in Chelsea, so I think it will just add something um, a bit more to the area. Um, and yeah, just a really cool hotel, very looking forward to it opening. Again, not sure when it's opening, but it's early next year, they're saying now. Next slide. So the Nomad Hotel, um, basically they've got one in New York, one in LA and one in Las Vegas. And this is coming to Co uh, Covent Garden um, in hopefully December 2020. Um, it's in a grade two listing in Covent Garden, which means that they will be keeping a lot of um, the decor preserved. Um, this is, it looks amazing, really big open spaces, great for social distancing, great open light, um, and I think the decor is gonna be amazing as well. So very looking forward to that opening. And it's also got 92 bedrooms. Next slide. So the London area, this is, it was meant to open this year. It's actually, I've just been told that it's opening early next year. This is in Leicester Square. Again, a great addition to Leicester Square. Um, it is going to be incredible. Um, it's got a rooftop restaurant and bar with great views. I think it'll be so nice to have a rooftop bar in Leicester Square. You can look over the film premieres um, and just people watching will be amazing there. Um, they also have a ballroom which fits a thousand people. So that will be great um, again. Um, and they'll also have a signature Mediterranean restaurant which will also be in um, the hotel. And it's headed up by the awarding group who run the Mayfair Hotel and the Radisson Group. So looking forward to that. 
Next slide. Again, very excited for this to open Nobu Hotel in uh, Portman Square. Um, I love Nobu, great restaurant. They are opening a Nobu restaurant here, a bar and an outdoor terrace. Um, and I just think it's in Marlebone. I think this will be great for the area. Um, it's got a 600 person ballroom as well, um, a gym, a wellness center, um, and then also some meeting spaces. Next slide. Berman's Lock. I am a big fan of lock hotels at the moment. Just given the times, their concept is you can go to the hotel, they've got a co-working space downstairs, you can work from their co-working spaces. Co-working spaces are gorgeous, bright, and um, lots of natural daylight. Um, and then the bedrooms have little kitchenettes and a little couch, so it means that you can cook in your room if you're not comfortable eating out, or you can order in if you're traveling alone sometimes and you don't want to eat out. But also they've got, um, usually they've got uh, signature restaurants inside. Now this one um, has Dairy, which is one of my favorite restaurants. It was in Clapham Common and now it's moved to Bermondsey, headed up by Robin Gill, um, an amazing restaurateur. Um, small, fine dining, British uh, cuisine. Um, and I just think this hotel is going to be great. You've got the restaurant, you've got the co-working, um, and the bedrooms are just fantastic and really affordable. Rooms start from about £95 a head. Great for a staycation if you want to get into the city or if you're just on business travel. Again, really good location. Next slide. So I'm going to go on to meetings and events now. Um, again, at the moment with times, I know a lot of people are working from home. So I just wanted to introduce you to some places if you are working from home and you want to host a business kind of get together, a business meeting, a business lunch. These are some places that you need to check out. Next slide. So Hoxton Southwark, I love the Hoxton group and um, they're one of my favourite groups. I just love that you can go into the hotel, their lobbies are always open for you to just sit down, uh, grab a seat, grab a coffee and you can work from there at no cost um, and great for just people watching again. Um, if I travel, I was in New York recently, I stayed in the Hoxton in New York and it was really great because it meant that I could work from the lobby really easily host a couple um, of meetings there. Um, and just it's, it's just a great kind of, they're always in great locations. So this is their newest one. This is the Hoxton Southwark. They've got a couple of meeting rooms, natural daylight, which I think is so important. Um, and what I love is the bedrooms are great. They're, they, they're quite small, but really great if you're a solo traveler. Um, and then they've got this amazing restaurant that they've opened upstairs called Seabird. I love it. Um, it's on the roof and it has gorgeous views of the city skyline and the shard. Um, and the food is amazing. If you ever go to Seabird, you need to get the octopus um, roll. It's it's like a hot dog but with, uh, um, with octopus in it. It's hard to describe, but it is so delicious. It's basically seafood meets Portuguese food, so really delicious. Next slide. Um, I am a big fan of the Meet and Place group. I use them quite a lot. Uh, they've got um, one in Soho and one in the city. It's basically meeting rooms on demand, so you can go for an hour or you can go for the whole day. Great if you want to host even interviews, if you wanted to record a podcast, um, they're amazing. They've got, you know, natural daylight again, and you get your teas, your coffees, your water, your orange juice. Um, and this one is opening in the Bluefin building in Southwark. Um, over the next couple of months, again, date unknown, but these are just ideal at the moment, especially if you don't have an office at the moment. It's great. You could get the team together. They have lots of different rooms. You can even host conferences there, which we've done with Miss Jones in the past. Um, and the rooms are all different sizes, so you can 
the rings start from two people rings up to about 30 um, to 50 kind of people size rings. Next slide. Very excited about this. This is the new um, Soho House, which is opening on the Strand next to, um, basically on the Strand next to Somerset House. Um, I am a member of Soho House. I think it's great to be a member of somewhere at the moment, especially we don't have an office at the moment. So great to be able to work um, and not be constantly always working from home, get out of the house a bit. This is going to be amazing and it's huge. Um, and what you can see from the design here of the photo, it's a bit hard to see, but they've got a rooftop pool. They also have an indoor pool and gym, along with different floors of bars, restaurants, and working spaces. Um, this was meant to open in March, but they've pushed it back a bit. But fingers crossed it opens this year or very early next year. Um, and can't wait for that to open. And they will also, what people don't know is, so House, you don't have to be a member to book their meeting place uh, spaces. You can book their meeting spaces and event spaces um, if you want to host an event. So always keep that in mind. Next slide. Um, hybrid events. Um, if you're looking to host a hybrid event, the Hanyard Hotel is great for this. They've got a screening room. You can host up to 80 people in the screening room with masks on, or you could host an event there yourself, film it, and then host it live. I love the Hammer Hotel in general, and the Ferndale Hotel have lots of venues, and um, so um, have a look at them. Next slide. So staycations are very popular at the moment, so I've put together a little list of some places that you should check out to stay within the country at the moment. Next slide. Wilderness Reserve, I love this place. It is huge, as you can see from the image. There is over 15 properties at this venue um, and over 100 bedrooms. This is great if you want to take the team away or if you just want to go away with your partner or friend. Um, it starts from two people up to um, hundreds of people. So um, really cool venue. They've got lots of act activities on site cooking, axe throwing, uh, biking, wine tasting, flower arranging, clay pigeon shooting, murder mystery, rowboats, bonfires. They've got pools, they've got gyms, they've got wellness facilities. They've just got the whole package. Um, so definitely check it out. Next slide. Again, a bit uh, smaller than Wilderness Reserve, but this is Retreat East. Bit like Soho Farmhouse vibes, love it, great way to get away, rent um, a little um, cabin and you can stay here um, and just really relax. Not as much activities as the other place, but they've got a spa on site and just somewhere to get away for a couple of days and just really unwind. Next slide. This is um, really, if you want to really have that luxury stay, um, Belmont Manoir or Cat Saison. Um, if you're familiar with Raymond Blanc, he's got his two-star Michelin starred restaurant here and he also has a cooking school. So if you wanted to gift someone an experience or treat someone to um, a special occasion, this is definitely the hotel for you. Um, it's in Oxford. It's just one of those classic hotels that everyone needs to try at some stage. Next slide. <clears throat> um, Babington House, one of my favourite hotels in the UK. Um, gorgeous. It's owned by Soho House. You can go and stay there. You don't have to be a member. They've got a gorgeous couch at spa. Um, the restaurant, really affordable. Um, and they've got an indoor and an outdoor pool and just really nice for walks and getting on a bike and exploring the area. It's only an hour and 20 minutes away and um, you just go to Bath and then you get a taxi from there. And the beds honestly are the most comfortable beds I've ever slept in. Next slide. This is something really different. It's just opened. It's Birch Community. 
Um, it's basically their kind of tagline is an escape from urban living and to really reset yourself. It's only 30 minutes from London um, and basically their spaces have been designed to really switch off your phone, your laptop and just reset. Um, they've got a restaurant here called the Zebra Riding Club and that's headed up by Robin Gill who's from the Dairy. Um, and the bedrooms are designed to really switch off, no TVs. Um, and they've got a screening room, co-working spaces, wellness spaces, and a Lido, which will be opening in 2021. Next slide. This is really cool. This is Native Restaurant. It was in London and Borough Market, and they've moved it to Osea Island, just near Essex. Um, the restaurant prides itself on using local produce and the dining times basically revolve around when the tide comes in and out. Um, you, get a, you can either get a little boat there or via ancient Roman causeway. Um, you'll be welcomed by Chef Ivan for drinks and snacks around a bonfire and then you'll sit down to enjoy a tasting menu or local produce. And they also have an experience where you can do it two hour forage before your meal, before you sit down and have the full experience. Um, so definitely really cool one to check out. Next slide. This is definitely a bucket list one. Um, this is the Belmont British Pullman Journey. I was very fortunate to experience it um, just before lockdown. Um, you get on the train. My experience was we got on the train, had breakfast, went to Bath, got to experience the bath, uh, the Roman baths, have a little walk around Bath and then get back on the train um, and have dinner on the train. It's just amazing. It's a great experience and um, great if you want to gift someone something a bit different or they do events, they do murder mysteries um, and they do places outside of London as well. So there's lots of different journeys. So definitely check them out. Next slide. Just moving on to a bit of team building now. It's so important at the moment with everything on to really get your teams together. And um, I'm just gonna touch on three kind of things that are just a bit different to your usual virtual online quizzes at the moment. Next slide. This is the Murder Express. It's opening on the 2nd of October. Um, and it's located in Shoreditch, you get on board a luxury train um, and experience an amazing tasting menu by Louisa Ellis, who's from MasterChef. Um, and I think it's gonna be great. They've got really good social distancing and safety measures in place. So great one if you want to bring the team out. Next slide. Um, this is an experience that we're actually offering our members at the moment. It's a Bombay Sapphire virtual masterclass package. What they do is they send out the package um, to everyone and then they host a masterclass for your team. Or if you want to do it with friends and family for an occasion, it's just something a bit different. I think it's really nice to receive something in the post and then get involved and do it. Um, so if you want to get in touch with us to organise this, do email us. Next slide. And um, this is Play Foundry. It's an online virtual team building um, game again. The idea is that you have to uh, save the office and everyone gets involved with games and puzzles and things like that. Um, and it's hosted by Play Foundry. So again, if you're looking for a team building activity, Christmas is coming up. We're putting actually together some packages now for Christmas given we're not sure what will happen with Christmas parties. So this could be something that you could do with your team instead of a Christmas party. And then finally, um, I just wanted to kind of give you just a few of my favorite restaurants um, that I visited at the moment. And um, I haven't put them in the slides. Um, so these are just places that I've gone to and that I really recommend visiting if you get a chance. Um, and you can make a note of them. So the first one is A Wong, uh, which is in Victoria, Chinese restaurant. It is amazing. It is just incredible. And um, it's headed up by Andrew Wong. Um, and I went for the dim sum lunch. Uh, it was just incredible. And they do this um, 
they do their duck pancakes with a bit of a twist. So you get your duck pancakes, you get a paintbrush and you paint on um, your hoisin sauce. Just uh, something a bit different. Um, and I spoke to Andrew and he, they're currently building a really big um, terrace outside with heaters um, ahead of the winter period. And they also have a really cool kind of hidden bar downstairs which you can rent out for events. Um, so definitely A1, check that out. Another one is Stanley's in Chelsea, which has just opened. Um, it's so delicious. Um, small British uh, dining. They've got a gorgeous, again, um, outdoor terrace um, with heaters. And they also have a private dining room, which at the moment, there's no minimum spend or higher fee. Um, it seats up to 12 and you can just order a starter and a main or a main and dessert. Um, so that's Stanley's in Chelsea. Um, and then Elliot's in Borough Market, again, small plates. They have taken kind of an area in Borough Market for outside dining. Um, really great for social distancing and the food is incredible. Just really good food. Um, another one is La Mamma Mia, which is in Chelsea. Basically, this is, um, they do an amazing menu. It's 30 pounds a head. You get an Aperol, you get a sharing platter, um, you then can pick a pasta, you then get a dessert, and then a coffee. Um, and the concept behind this is these um, Italian mamas come over and they cook for you, and it's just incredible and such good value. Um, and finally, one that I went to last week, um, 10 cases, in Covent Garden and um, they basically order in 10 cases of wine on the, uh, they carefully select them and once the wine's done it's done um, and they have again small plates really good if you're very into your wine so that's um, my presentation I hope you enjoyed it and yeah if you've got any questions do let me know and if you want to get in touch please do follow us on Instagram to kind of keep in the know of where we're eating um, do add me on LinkedIn and Miss Jones on LinkedIn and you can find out more about Miss Jones on our website. Great, thanks Lisa. It's great to see that so many new venues are opening up. Um, I know. Next year at the end of this year. Um, some positive news for the industry, which we're obviously all looking forward to. Um, can you just let the viewers know how they can get a copy of your slides? Because we've had quite a few requests. Yes, so I will either, if you email us in, and um, if you either go to our booth and just, if you go to our booth, uh, you can just request some more information, we'll send out the slides, and then I will be putting them up on LinkedIn as well. Um, so if you just follow myself or on uh, Miss Jones, I will give a link to the slides. So yeah, and I'll include the last few restaurants as well on the slides. Perfect, thank you. Just a couple of questions now that we've had um, during your session. First one being, do you think venues will be able to return to day delegate rates, including buffet lunches? It's so hard with the buffet lunches, I think, at the moment. I, I know, I think what they will do is they will have some sort of package in place, um, but mm. it will be more so that it won't be a buffet style. I think it will be a menu and you kind of pick what you can get. I think it's just too hard with buffets at the moment and not very safe. So that's what I think will happen. But definitely, I know the venues are working hard to get those day delegate rates um, in place at the moment. So, and you can have up to 30 people for meetings and for, din for business dinners, what a lot of people don't realize. So- um, Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's really useful. And I'm sure um, the viewers will want to know that. Another question just in, do you think the theatrical element in, uh, will become more important in dining next year? Yeah, and it's so, it's so hard because um, I think at the moment, you know, it's singers have only just come back, like live bands have only just mm. come back. And I do think that more than ever, um, people will be dining out and will want more of an experience. I think if people are, you know, dining out and Definitely. they're a bit worried to dine out, they will want a full experience. And I think that's why I think that Park Row restaurant or venue will do so well because 
there's just so many elements and you really feel like, especially if you're traveling to London, that you get a full night out. Um, and people are a bit bored of being at home, you know, and they want to get out, they want something different. Definitely. I can't stress enough as well, like, it's so tough for the hospitality industry. And if you are worried, the hospitality industry are going out of their way, putting so much money into making these places a safe environment. And, you know, the figures are showing at the moment that it's actually, it's not, it's not spreading from these hospitality venues, it's in other places. So I am encouraging everyone to do try support the hospitality industry at the moment and try eat out when you can to help them. Definitely. We think it's really important that you should do that too. Um, it brings me on nicely to my next question. Do you think theming is going to be key to venues to stand out next year? Yeah, I mean, your theming, it's hard. I think everyone's trying to be as creative as they can um, and add something, especially with the new restaurant openings. It's like, what's going to make me stand out i was talking to someone about this the other day and they're like you know we're launching a new restaurant but how do we really make it stand out and something that i've seen recently is that you pay like a set fee and there's no menu you just are kind of given you know that experience um, and I'm, i think there's going to be a trend in that because people want something different they're bored of the deliveries they're bored of cooking at home but they again they want that experience um, and I, I can definitely see that that will be a big theme, but because I think people aren't eating out as much, I think the eat out to help out was incredible. Um, but I do think yeah. now that people are eating out, they want to see something different. So I do think if there's a theme in place, that will make the venue stand out just that little bit more. Yeah, definitely. We think that's important too. Um, where would you recommend for vegetarian and vegan? I get this so I every all the time. Yeah, <laughs> very topical. <laughs> um, vegan. It's it's so hard because my I've got my best friend's vegan. Um, so <laughs> she, I'm I'm always bringing her to places. Um, I think uh, it's so hard at the moment because um, Vanilla Black was definitely an amazing um vegetarian restaurant. It's just shut down. Um, a lot of places are doing really kind of, they do have their vegan menus. I know Hakkasan has their own vegetarian vegan menu, um, which I think is always great to see if restaurants actually do their own menus. Um, I'm trying to think, Mildred's, um, they have a few of them um, that is solely vegan restaurants. Um, where else is good? I'm trying to think of the cuff. Where does she love? Another one that closed down was Cub. That was amazing. And that closed down as well. So hard, like remembering where it's still open and where it's closed. Um, where else? Of course, and we'll probably, we'll probably see some more restaurants of the Z pop up within the yeah. next year anyway, that specifically dedicated to, you know, vegan and vegetarian options. Well, I, do, um, I do recommend that a lot of the time they don't advertise the vegan and vegetarian restaurant on um, their website. So do email and ask them for um, that menu because they will send you the options that they have ahead of time. And um, sometimes the chefs will be creative as well and have some stuff designed that are off menu as well. So always ask in advance. Um, but I do think restaurants are being very good and they're creating more and more um, options as well, which is great to see. Definitely. Um... And just as a final parting question, what would be your number one recommendation for venue choice next year? My no I think, well, I haven't been, so I think that Park Row venue, it just sounds- Park Row, yeah. Yeah, amazing. I think that one will be, yeah. And yeah, I think I think that's, and I think the Nobu Hotel in Portman Square is gonna be incredible as well. So, um, and then that Wilderness Reserve outside London is just, especially for people wanting to get away at the moment. I think that's definitely one to check out. And even though it's so big, you can go um, as two people. So, or you can host big events there. So they're my, they're my ones for next year. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's been great hearing from you. Thank you so you. much for having me. <laughs>
Yeah, and just to recap, guys, you can um, if you're looking out for a copy of Lisa's slides today, just head along to the expo area and contact the Miss Jones PA booth, and Lisa will contact you back there. Great, thank you so much, Sarika. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye.